learn how to do this illustration on Procreate in few easy steps. On today's tutorial, you're gonna learn how to create this lamp slash flower pot letter A. It's a beginner friendly video that will guide you through some sketching, symmetry tools, coloring, shading using our free grains and patterns, and then we'll draw some illustrative motives and final details. Today's tutorial is a little bit longer than the usual ones, so grab your iPad, your Apple Pencil, sit down, relax, and let's do this. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is tap on the plus sign to create a new canvas. Now, since I'm in Europe, I'll be using centimeters, so I'm gonna do a 22 centimeters width times 30 centimeters height. All right, so now I'm gonna select the color palette by going to the one that I prepared for you. You can download this and the free brushes using the link down below. Now go to Actions, Canvas, right here, Drawing Guide, and Edit Drawing Guide. Now tap on Symmetry down below, and done. Now we will start the sketch of our letter, and for this you can just grab any pencil that you have. Now draw a straight line without lifting the pencil off of the screen and tap on the screen with a finger to lock the angle of the line. Do the same one with the horizontal one. And now draw the same line as before. And now without lifting the pencil, tap up here on line and you're gonna be able to edit the line and just move it around. Okay, so now we have the A. I'm gonna close it up here as well. And now I'm gonna finish it up. Oh, also, if you don't want to draw this, you can also use the typography tool. Now go to the layers panel, tap on plus to create a new layer. And I'm gonna do a straight line here and a circle without lifting the pencil. So you can actually edit the circle by tapping up here. Now make sure that each side of the circle touches the side of the line. So something like this, maybe a little bit smaller. So this is the start of the flower pot. And for this, I'm going to go to the layer, tap on it, and tap on drawing assist. So the symmetry tool is activated. Now I'm gonna finish this pot. Okay, so this is done. Now I'm gonna start drawing the plant inside, so the leaves. Uh, remember that by following the A, you will actually see a letter A after when your illustration is done. So, so okay, now go to the layers and deactivate the drawing assist. Now the leaves are gonna be drawn separately. So yeah, just follow my drawing. You can also go a bit wilder here. Or if you know how to draw leaves better than I do, you can also do that. Now this one won't have any folds but the second one will be a little bit more complicated. Just follow my lines. So here is just like I'm drawing a normal one, but then this line will cross over the other two lines. So something like this. Yeah, I'm gonna cross here. I'm taking time to do the sketch because I think it's very important, you know, to have something clean so afterwards we don't get lost when we render it. So yeah, I'm just gonna select the eraser tool and I'm just, you know, sketching in the iPad is quite similar to sketching in real life, so yeah. Okay, so now this is the outer part of the leaf that gets folded here. And yeah, I think something like that will work. By making these leaves a little bit different, we're gonna, you know, make something more interesting for sure. Now, for this crossbar, I'm gonna do another leaf coming from the left one. So again, I'm just gonna draw the line from the middle of the leaf and follow that same shape as the first leaf. Now here I'm adding a fold. By doing this, I'm gonna erase the outer part and I'm gonna follow this little shape. Okay, I think I'm done with the main structure of this letter A. And now I'll draw this light cord on the top of this vase or this light. Okay, um, you can go to the airbrushing panel 
and select something like a medium blend brush. Something that, you know, you see that the stroke is the same all the time. And here I'm just gonna do some shape like this. If you don't know how to do the knot, you can obviously copy the exact same one that I'm doing here. Or you can just grab a chord that you have home and try different knots and try to draw this. It's gonna really help you, you know, to understand the way that some parts go behind or in front of others. But yeah, it's, it's really fun to, you know, try it out in real life and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm just erasing some of the lines that I believe will be behind. And yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Now I'm just gonna delete that first chord layer. And then on one of the layers, I'm just gonna draw a couple elements here to fill up a bit the space. Here, there's gonna be a little shadow. Up here, I'll do some, you know, shapes that make our piece look a little bit more interesting and filled up. Okay, so now that I have the sketch, I'm gonna go to the layers panel and I'm gonna pinch them all together. And I'm gonna tap on the N and bring the opacity down. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna start rendering this with a monoline. You can select a monoline from the airbrushing panel or maybe even a calligraphy brush under the calligraphy panel. Okay, so now I'm gonna tap on this, drawing assist, like before, and I'm gonna start doing this vase. I selected the yellow color, as you see. Now I'm gonna select a new layer and I'm gonna draw a circle the exact same way that I did before, okay? Uh, so yeah, just adapt it so it touches these two lines that we drew before. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do it a little bit smaller like this. Okay, and now I'm just gonna drop a color inside. And then I'm gonna go to duplicate and I'm gonna bring this little circle on top of everything. Now I'm gonna go to this panel at the bottom. I'm gonna tap on freeform and I'll adjust the height of this circle. Just gonna make sure that it touches perfectly. And now go to the layers panel. I'm gonna turn off the circle down. And then I'm gonna pinch together the lines and the circle at the top. Now I'm just gonna close this with a line and drop a color inside. Okay, so now we have the two parts of the lamp. Now I'm gonna change the color of one, so I see what's happening here. So, just gonna put a lighter color. And then this circle, I'm just gonna drag it on top. Okay, so now we have the main lamp or pot, however you wanna call it. Okay, so now I'm gonna start creating other elements and I'm gonna select the blue color with the same brush as before, or you can also use a calligraphy brush. And I'm just gonna start drawing this leaf. Just gonna close it up here. And this one, I'm gonna draw just the full, let's say, the inner part of this leaf. Also close it up here so you can drop a color inside and now drop it. Okay. Now go to the layers panel, select a new layer and I'm gonna, well, wait, I'm gonna head back and select those two leaves and I'm gonna drop a darker color. Okay, so now I'm gonna select the original blue and on the new layer, I'm gonna start drawing this outer fold of it. The sketch you have below is to follow it, but you can also improvise a little bit if you see that something else looks better. So for example, something like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase some part and try to make, you know, this like interception here smooth. So right, I'm gonna close it up here. And now I'm gonna select an eraser. You can select the same eraser as you're using the brush. And make this thinner and just drop a color inside. Okay. 
just okay perfectionism here and there <laughs> okay we're done now now select this little circle and now tap on it and tap on select now go down to this panel and tap on invert now go to the leaves and with an eraser i'm gonna erase these parts that i don't need because they go inside the pot so like that if you got lost in the last step you can also erase these parts manually now select the layer that has the fold of the leaf and with the same blue color i'm gonna draw the little leaf inside okay seems like this one was easy now i'm gonna drop a color inside now i'm just gonna bring the sketch so the first layer on top of everything and i'm gonna create a new layer now select this third yellow color which is almost white and i'm gonna draw the fold this is the same way we drew the other fold before so just draw the main shape and then you can always get an eraser and just perfect it a little bit here and there okay okay this looks good now let's create a new layer select dark purple and go select a script brush you can find lots of them in your native calligraphy brushes okay so now i'm just gonna draw this line inside the leaves Okay, so now don't erase anything because after we finish the lines, we're gonna erase the parts that, that we don't want. Okay, now let's do the fourth one. And this one is gonna be connected with the first line with it. Okay, I think, I think that's gonna work. Now select the same eraser. And this time we're just gonna erase things manually. So just erase the parts that you want. And then this one is going to go inside the fold. And then this will have to be kind of like it's, you know, th this part is coming from outside. Okay. Okay, we're done with this. Now let's go to the layers panel. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to drag it at the bottom of everything else. Now I'm going to select this pink. And I'm gonna start doing this light cord on top. For this, you can use the same brush we used before. So a medium blend or a hard blend, something like that will work. Here, I just wanna change a couple options in the brush. So tap on the brush and then inside the brush studio, go to stabilization and then bring the amount a little bit up. Now we're gonna have a better control of our stroke. Just play around with these options until until it's easier for you. So let's try to bring it to a 60%. Yeah, that's gonna work. Just follow the path that you drew before. Cool, so now, cool, so now create a new layer, select the purple color, and with the same brush, just do a straight line at the bottom. That's gonna be our floor. Now, I'll do a massive circle up here for one of these random, you know, shapes or furniture, uh, whatever you see it as. And now I'm going to drop a color inside. And with this other color, I'm just going to do this little square here. Remember, use your left finger all the time, you know, to to lock up the angles of of these lines. So right now, since we're doing a square, we want 90 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna drop the color. Like, 
Now I'm just trying to make sure that all the colors are balanced. Now that our base drawing is done, we're just gonna select our layers and create new clipping masks on top of each one of them. So tap on plus and then clipping mask. Do this for all your colored layers. Now I'm gonna go to the clipping mask on top of the vase and I'm gonna select the freebie, the Grainers sample set. Remember that you can find the link down below. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn off the drawing assist. And now with a, a little bit darker yellow, I'm just gonna start spraying on the right. So it's gonna be more grainy on the right than on the left because the light source I've decided that it's coming from the left. So everything, in the whole illustration actually, everything that is on the right side is gonna be a little bit darker. So yeah, just, you know, try to make this even. And now I'm gonna select the purple color to add darker shadows. So this is actually a very tedious process, but yeah, I'm just gonna now select a little bit darker yellow that it's not in the color palette and just to make it a little bit more even and I'm just gonna include it in my color palette somewhere there now I'm gonna select this white color and I'm gonna spray some lights a little bit off center left somewhere here okay now here you can add more or less depending on what you want better now I selected even a wider tone but yeah, I think here the technique is just to zoom out and see what looks better. Now, with the same white color, I'm just gonna start spraying down here. So it looks like this border gets, you know, wider. Okay, something like this is gonna work. And now I'm just gonna concentrate for a minute to see what looks better. Okay, now I'm done with this, I'm gonna go to the clipping mask on top of the little circle or the hole and I'm gonna start making it more, making it darker but inside. So now I'm just gonna go straight to the purple one and I'm just gonna make sure that, that I can clearly see the difference in between the inner part of this spot or light and the outer part that we previously did. Now I'm gonna go to the selection tool and I'm gonna select this part using the option freehand down here. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadows somewhere here. And the same somewhere here. These are the shadows that the leaves are you know doing okay so okay so that's done now probably what i'll do is select the white color and do a little bit as before so in the outer part of this hole just gonna make it a little bit lighter so you know just to to show that there is some you know, light touching this. Cool. Okay. Okay, I'm officially done with the pot. Now go to the leaves, to so the clipping masks on, on top of the leaves. And with a purple color, I'm just gonna do the same process as in the pot. So this right side of it is gonna be darker. And then just to add a little bit more realism to the leaves once i'm done with this i'm gonna go to selection tool and i'm gonna select the left side of this leaf and then i'm gonna spray some dark shadows as well coming you know from the center 
to to the left. So okay, I'll leave you I'll leave you to it for for a few minutes and I'm gonna finish this. Okay, so you will see across this tutorial that sometimes I put the lights in the same clipping mask, but for these more complicated ones, I'm gonna select a new layer and I'm gonna make it a clipping mask so my shadows and my lights are separated and I can erase them individually. So I'm just gonna add some um, lights here on the left and then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna repeat the same technique as before with the shadows. And in this case, I'm gonna select this, you know, other half and I'm just gonna do the same with the lights so yeah I'll see you in a couple seconds
Okay, so here I just wanted to point out something. So since this fold is kind of like close to what would be the inside of the leaf, I'm trying to make these shadows like kind of like small, you know? So the darker and smaller the shadow is, the more proximity will the two shapes have with each other. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm just left with this last fold. All right, so now let's go to the last fold and I'm just gonna drop a, a blue color, like, you know, like the same color as the rest of them. And now I'm gonna go to the green and with the same grainy brush, I'm just gonna start adding some shadows. Maybe just a little bit purple, not much, because this fold is on the outer part of the of the leaf. And then some lights right on top. These lights are gonna be perfect to see a bigger contrast in between, you know, what's like on the fold and what's inside the leaf. Now I want to correct some color in the overall leaves. So I'm gonna go to the main leaves, the green ones, and I'm gonna tap on it and alpha lock. There you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna select a blue color, the lighter one, and then I'm gonna use a soft brush from the airbrushing panel. And now I'm just gonna spray a little bit more, you know, blue here and there, because I considered that it was maybe a tad too much, you know, green. And this blue is just gonna give us a little bit more life to the whole, to the whole thing. Now let's select back our grainy brush. And if you have two clipping masks on top of the main leaves, I'm just gonna pinch them together. Now with the selection tool, the freehand one, I'm just gonna select a little part here in between the small leaf and the big leaf. And I'm just gonna add a shadow that the small leaf is producing on the big one. Now if you see that you need to reinforce some shadows like this one here, now is the time to do it. And finally I'm gonna do this little shadow that the branch of the small leaf is doing. So I'm gonna select the medium brush in the airbrushing panel and with a really small size, I'm just gonna do this off shadow. So it looks like, you know, first the branch is actually touching the main leaf and then it's kind of separating. Okay, so now let's go the lamp cord. And for this, I just wanna, I just wanna show you something that you could do if you had our instant 3D brushes. So by selecting a primary and a secondary color and having this brush set, I could actually do a cool effect with just one stroke. So you would get something like this. So if you want to check out these brushes, the link is also down below. Okay, so let's now use the same grainy brushes in order to do the shadows and lights of this chord. This will require a little bit more patience and I'm just gonna skip forward a little bit. But, but what you wanna do here is to do shadows on different layers and so like first I'm gonna draw a bit and then with an eraser I'm just gonna erase these parts. So the technique here is to build up shadows in different clipping masks and then erase parts that you don't need. Okay, so now create a new layer that is acting as a clipping mask. And I'm gonna draw another, you know, set of shadows, let's say. Now I'm gonna select just this part and I'm gonna start drawing some shadows here. So you'll see that I'm not mindful about certain parts of the chord because I'm just drawing for this little section of it. So you can see like now here I'm doing 
this darker because it's on the right side. Now I'm just gonna put also a little bit more here. And then with the eraser, I'm just gonna carefully erase what I don't want. So yeah, this multiple clipping masks technique is good, you know, to build up shadows in objects that are super complicated like this one. So remember, new clipping mask, some shadows, erase, then do another clipping mask, some more shadows, erase, and keep doing this until you are satisfied with, with what you have. Okay, so uh, I'll leave you to it because otherwise this tutorial is getting a little bit long. So yeah, just pause this or just check this little time lapse that I'm gonna put now. Now, when you have multiple clipping masks and you're satisfied with your shadows, you can just pinch all of them and so you just have one clipping mask as shadows. Okay, so now that we are done with these shadows, I'm gonna create yet a new clipping mask, but this time it's gonna be for the lights. So I'm gonna select a lighter color and with the same brush, I'm just gonna spray some lights in the middle. So somewhere here, in this like three parts of my cord. So here, here, and the one below. Great, well, so now the whole letter A, it's looking great. Now we're just gonna work on some elements in the background and I'm just gonna start adding some grains on the floor. So go to the floors layer and with the same brush with a dark purple I'm just gonna well I'm just gonna turn off the sketch because we don't need it anymore now remember go to the clipping mask that is acting on the floor select a bigger grain and start spraying some grains here here you can try if you want to do from from dark to light up or you know just play around Remember to build it up little by little. Okay, so when you're done, we're gonna create the drop shadow of the letter A on the floor, right? So create a new layer. And then now here, I'm gonna start building up some kind of circle with the grains. Something like this. It's darker in the center and lighter on the sides. And now with the free transform tool and the warp tool, I'm just gonna, you know, modify it until I'm satisfied with what I see. Something like this is gonna work, maybe a little bit more. I'm just gonna turn off the magnetics so I can rotate it a little bit more. And then with the free form, I'm also gonna make it a little bit less tall or maybe, anyway, just play with the menu. And now I'm gonna bring the opacity down. Okay, so now that I'm done with this, what I'm gonna do is to start shading these two shapes, this circle and then the square on the right side. So again, follow the same technique and I'll see you in a second. Now what I want to do here that is a little bit different than before is to add a little bit of color yellow right on this side. I'm doing this because later on I'm going to be doing some light coming from the lamp. And by doing this yellow, you know, it's going to look a little bit more realistic since the light of the lamp is going to be touching these two objects as well. Just a little bit. Now let's do the right one. Maybe I can try as well to, to add some light on this side with some pink color. Here I'm just trying out really, so this is not, you know, science. I didn't, I didn't prepare for some of these lights, so yeah, just you know, do something similar or yeah, if you come up with something super new, please let me know. 
Okay, cool. So now again, I'm just gonna do the the yellow thing. Okay, so we are almost done with this illustration and now I'm gonna create a new layer on top of everything and with a calligraphy brush, a script, something like that. So yeah, this one is gonna work. I'm gonna create a little, you know, some, some, some kind of a bug, maybe like a moth or something. So this is the head gonna create a little bit of the body it doesn't have to look realistic because this is gonna be quite small but it's gonna add some you know nice touch to you know the typical lamp surrounded by mods so I'm just gonna do some wings here and you're gonna see that especially when I add the you know the little shadow coming from from the legs of the moth the whole piece is gonna look a little bit more real. So now I'm just gonna draw some antennas here. Yeah, something like this. And now finally, I'm just gonna do some of the legs. If you don't know how to draw this little moth, you can also just Google math, you know, put it on a new layer, bring the opacity down and and just and just copy the, the shape of it. Okay, I think that's that's gonna work. I'm just gonna put it a little bit smaller even. I'm gonna put it on the lamp. Now I'm gonna create a layer underneath that and then with a soft brush inside the airbrushing panel with the size that is very small. I'm just gonna create some shadows that are a little bit darker when they touch the legs and they get more transparent as they go off of it. Okay, so something like this. And like this. Okay, you see that when you look it from afar, it kinda looks real, at least those legs. Now I'm tapping on this layer and selecting alpha lock and with the same soft brush, or maybe like a bigger one if you have one in the airbrushing panel, I'm gonna tap on the selection tool and the freehand tool at the bottom, and I'm just gonna select the wings of the moth. Now with the yellow color, I'm just gonna do a little light, you know, like it's coming from the lamp, and a little bit pink as well, so it looks kinda cooler. And then I'm gonna do the same selection tool, maybe like this part of the body, something like this. And then again, just gonna add some yellow light somewhere here. Just subtle, you know, don't, don't overdo it. Cool. Some pink. And that's it. We have our moth. Now I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm just gonna put it a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll just put three. Yeah, just pick the spots that, that you wanna place them at. And now go to the layers panel and on top of the clipping mask of the lamp, create a new clipping mask. Now select a white color and select a medium hard brush. And I'm just gonna do like these circles 
around the lamp so it has some nice texture something like this yeah with four is gonna work perfectly and now i'm gonna just play with the modes a little bit play as long as you find one that you like and i'm just gonna leave it there now i'm gonna do the same thing but with the chord so i'm just gonna new layer clipping mask but now I'm gonna put some patterns that you also have for free in our treasury. So I'm just gonna go by parts as you know the same way that I did before. I'm gonna tap on the brush and then I'm gonna go to texture and bring this texture a little bit down. And so we don't see the repetition being really obvious. I'm just gonna go by parts. So I'm gonna spray some here and then I'm gonna erase this part otherwise you know this texture would look super flat and it wouldn't look realistic at all so and I'm gonna do the same up here I'm gonna erase it and then I'm gonna repeat the same process across all these little parts so I'm just you know rotating my screen and then in different angles I'm just adding this pattern now here I'm also gonna play with modes anything that is overlay or soft light or add it's gonna look nice so now I'm just gonna if you have some more patterns you can um, keep putting them you know on the leaves for example I use the premium um, pattern set that I did with Candice Baldwin and I'm using one of the brushes to to add some nice patterns on the leaves but whatever you have in your iPad you can use as well or you can actually even draw some random shapes on top of this leaf but yeah feel free to do whatever you want Okay, so now I added some patterns and textures all over the place. Now I'm gonna create a new layer on top of everything else and I'm just gonna drop a white color. Now with the free transform tool, I'm just gonna tap on this sort and I'm gonna drag this I'm gonna drag these corners on the lamp. Well actually a little bit up here. And I'm gonna put the opacity down and I'm gonna change the mode into something I like this is also trial and error so I'm just gonna maybe try with the yellow color and see what happens with different modes and see how it interacts with your colors. so there is not just one rule because sometimes you know depending on the colors it can look different so now I'm selecting a soft brush as a, an eraser and I am erasing the light a bit down and leaving it as it goes up. So now go to the original little circle, tap on it and tap on select. Now tap on invert, go to the light and with the eraser just erase this part that you don't want. You can also do this manually if you get lost using this step that I just used. I'm still not satisfied with this, so I'm just gonna try more. And now I'm pinching some layers with their clipping masks because I'm running out of layers, so you can do this at any time if you run out of layers. And then I'm also trying to add some nice yellow color in the background on a new layer. 
Now maybe this light, since I've been trying and I don't like per se what I see, I'm just gonna go to adjustments and then into the hue saturation lightness, I'm just gonna change the hue a little. And I see now that, yeah, I kinda like what's happening now, so finally I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay, so now I'm just gonna create yet a new layer on top of everything. And now I'm just gonna do a couple more elements on the floor. So I'm just gonna do this circle. And then I'm gonna create a clipping mask. And I'm gonna use the same shading techniques as for the whole piece using the grains. Now let me show you my favorite technique to add a little drop shadow on something that is touching the floor. I'm just gonna pinch these two layers together, duplicate, and with the first one I'm going to adjustments, use saturation and brightness, and I'm just gonna bring the brightness down so it becomes black. Now I'm gonna move it with the free transform and distort it until I'm satisfied. Now I'm gonna go to adjustments again, and I'm gonna add a little Gaussian blur. Something like that is gonna work. Now do more adjustments, and now I'm done. So I'm gonna pinch these two together, I'm gonna move it around, and I'm gonna duplicate it so I can place this ball together with the drop shadow somewhere else in the canvas as well. So I think I'm also gonna do it three times, like the same as with the moths. And I'm gonna bring a little bit smaller one here, maybe on the background. Okay, so now I'm gonna pinch these last two, and I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur and I'm gonna add a little Gaussian because since they are super in the background I want them to be a bit blurred out Now I want to go to the background as well to the floor I'm gonna select the floor Adjustments and a little Gaussian blur as well because that line goes as well Far and hey, I think I'm done Thank you so much for getting to the end of the tutorial. I know it's been a long one, actually 50 minutes as I'm seeing, but I really hope that you consider this a good investment of your time. Remember that you can get over 50 Procreate freebies by visiting shoutbam.com and becoming a member of our community newsletter. I'll see you in two weeks with another fresh tutorial. And on the meantime, don't forget to like this video, consider subscribing, and maybe watch one of these two videos if you want to learn more. See you soon. Bye.